Hello, I'm Helen Jones, the Liverpool South Pastoral Area Pastoral Associate. I'm delighted to be here today and share this virtual space with you. We're starting our Advent service today with a song which has been adapted by Year 6 at St Patrick's Roman Catholic Primary School in Toxteth. It's Hallelujah by Leonard Cohen. It sets the scene as to where we are now, the sacrifices we've made and the gratitude we show to all those, especially those who've been working on the front lines.
I'm Izzy from St. Wilfred's Parish, Garston. If you have a candle you would like to light in your homes as we celebrate Advent virtually, please do so. Be prepared to reflect on our Advent journey and so together, let us pray. Loving God, as we enter this Advent season, we open all the dark places in our lives and memories to the healing light of Christ. Show us the creative power of hope. Prepare our hearts to be transformed by you, that we may walk in the light of Christ. Amen. Some of the children from Holy Trinity Primary in Garston share what Advent means to them. Advent is a time for preparation when we prepare both ourselves, families and our home ready to share the joy of Christmas with all we know. It is a time of anticipation of the love and the gifts to come on Christmas Day, like the love shown to Jesus on that first Christmas Day. We use an Advent wreath to help us count down the weeks to Christmas. The first Sunday of Advent we light a purple one. The second Sunday of Advent we light two purple candles. The, the third Sunday of Advent is known as Gorday, Garday Sunday, which means rejoice. It also reminds us that we are halfway through Advent. The fourth Sunday of Advent, the last purple candle is lit. Then on Christmas Day, a white candle is lit to let us know that Advent is finished. The time of preparation is over and it is now time to celebrate the birth of Jesus. Advent is a time to see my family and think about the people that don't have a good Christmas. Our class, we are going to use an activity Advent calendar to help us count days, the days to Christmas, a day when we remember the birth of Jesus. Advent is a time to celebrate Jesus' birth. I like spending this time with my family. The world was in darkness and nobody knew. The words to the Father as you and I do. They needed a light to show them the way. And the great light sh shone on Christmas Day. Now we will reflect on who peace, joy and love in our pastoral area. We pray together. O wisdom, Lord and ruler, root of Jesse, key of David, rising sun, king of the nations, Emmanuel, come Jesus. Hi, I'm Sam from St Anthony of Padua in Mossley Hill. Our scripture reading for hope is from the prophet Isaiah. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light on those who lived in a land of deep shadow, a light has shone. The word of the Lord. We're now going to hear from parishioners who share their experiences of hope. Hope to me means being resilient and to wish for things improving and not giving up. For example, Christmas, the day Jesus was born, where we light a special white candle for Jesus' birthday at the end on the 25th of December. At Advent, 
We hope for the Messiah to come down from heaven to earth and to teach me and you how to be resilient and never give up. I also hope for coronavirus to go away before Advent, so that's something we can all hope for as well. During lockdown, what's given me hope and joy is the ability to have a meal with my community, um, even over Zoom, and to maintain our familial connection, um, even if we can't be together in the same room. Christians wait hopefully for the Messiah to return. So what gives me hope is seeing the huge number of CAFOD volunteers and supporters from around the country and their kindness and generosity during this difficult time of the pandemic. God gave us hope to help those in need. And one thing that gives me hope is watching the young people in my life adapt and rise up again to find new and fruitful ways of living out their lives after the disappointment and despair of having their life plans and opportunities taken away from them by the pandemic and, and the measures that are put in place to deal with it. God gave us hope so we can achieve our dreams. We really need our hope and full trust in God, yeah, and hoping for things to change for us all, for the better. We need hope to follow in God's footsteps. I experience hope and hoping for a better future and that things are going to get better. A glimmer of hope occurred in July when the restrictions were lifted and facilities reopened. This has enabled us to take stock of the situation and mass testing has helped us understand our current position. This has now filled me with hope that a vaccination will be available in the very near future. To finish our time of reflection on hope, we'll now hear an extract from an Advent prayer by Joyce Rupp, which will be read to us by John from St Anne and St Bernard's in Overbury Street. God of hope, come, be the morning star in our midst, the light that can never go out, the beacon of hope guiding our way to you. Come into our midst and make of our lives a home where your everlasting goodness resonates with assuring love and vigorous hope. Amen. Oh, come, Lord of Jesse, free I know from Satan's tyranny. From depths of hell thy people save, and give them victory over the grave. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall be born for thee, O Israel. We pray together, O Wisdom, Lord and Ruler, Root of Jesse, Key of David, Rising Sun, King of the Nations, Emmanuel, Come, Jesus. Hello, I'm Joan from St. Wilfred's Parish Garson. Our scripture reading for, for peace from, is from the prophet Micah. But you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, the least of the clans of Judah, out of you will be born for me the one who is to rule over Israel. His origin goes back to the distant past, to the days of old. The Lord is therefore going to abandon them till the time when she who is to give birth gives birth. Then the remnant of his brothers will come back to the sons of Israel. He will stand and feed the flock with the power of the Lord, with the majesty of the name of his God. They will live secure, for from then on he will extend his power to the ends of the land. He himself will be peace. The word of the Lord. Sister Mary of the Incarnation from the Carmelite Monastery, Maryton, will share a reflection on He Himself Will Be Peace. He Himself Will Be Peace. 
Peace is not merely the absence of war, nor the quiet life we all long for, but an inner quality of the heart. How often have we said, when everything is going wrong all around us, oh, for a bit of peace? Is peace determined by what is going on around us? Do things outside of ourselves really have the power to disturb our inner peace? Or have we found in the words of the prophet Micah that he, God himself, will be peace? Advent, this beautiful season of promise, enriches us with the prayer, praise and longing of the Old Testament prophets. Men who endured so much in their own lives to obey God's word by carrying out his commands. How often they speak to us of peace, a longing born, no doubt, of the many hardships and persecutions in their own lives. They bequeath to us all that they they themselves longed for without experiencing its fullness. Daily contact with these scriptures will enrich us beyond measure and invite us to enter into ourselves in prayer to draw closer to the God who dwells within us, the very God of peace. This will give birth to many wonderful graces, perhaps the greatest of which is a growing sense of inner peace, a serenity which in itself imparts peace to others. This communication of God's gift of peace is a true sign that he lives within us, and the fulfillment of the prophecy of Micah all those years ago. He will stand and feed his flock with the power of Yahweh, with the majesty of the name of his God. They will live secure, for from then on he will extend his power to the ends of the land. He himself will be peace. Next, we'll hear from some parishioners as to what brings them peace. Peace is when you're calm and relaxed. You can do puzzles and listen to calm music. Peace means that when you're fighting with your brother or sister or friend, then you say sorry and and are friends again. It's sorting problems out and being kind. Peace is love. I experience peace by leaving my phone behind and going for a walk and rosary. What gives me peace is sitting quietly in the early morning in our chapel. Peace is when war or fighting ends. Me and my friend fell out and we said sorry. I gave each other a hug to make peace. I experience peace through all the wonderful opportunities on Zoom to pray together with people. It's been amazing to pray with people from all over the UK. As a child lies quietly in its mother's arms, so my heart is quiet within me. Psalm 131. Claire from St. Clair and St. Hugh's Septon Park will read a prayer by David Adams from Tides and Seasons. Unending peace. Take me, Lord, from busyness to the place of quietness, from the tumult without cease into your great unending peace. Help me then, my Lord, to see what I am and ought to be, God of life, God of peace, God of wonders that will not cease, God eternal, Trinity, God everlasting, come to me.
We pray together. O wisdom, Lord and ruler, root of Jesse, key of David, rising sun, king of the nations, Emmanuel, come Jesus. Hi, I'm Vicky from St. Charles and St. Thomas More in Edinburgh. Our scripture reading from Joy from the prophet Isaiah. Be glad and rejoice forever and ever for what I am creating, because I now create Jerusalem joy and her people gladness. The word of the Lord. The children at Holy Family in Toxteth will sing for us before we share our thoughts on joy. Give me joy in my heart, give me praise. The Jerusalem song and dance brings me joy. It makes me smile every time I see it. My prayer is for the peace and joy of Christmas to be with us all for Christmas and throughout the coming year. My icon, my advent joy. Smile and wish those you see a good day. It cheers up a stranger and leaves you feeling happy. Everyone's a winner. I experienced joy when I was with my family watching the Indian version of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire and we still do it today. The thing that gives me joy is coming to work and being greeted by Father Joe's dog, Josh. Yes! I feel joy when I'm with my family. I feel joy when I'm playing with my friends. My joy is the flickering light of the first Advent candle. It fills me with warmth and hope as we prepare to celebrate the birth of Jesus. The thing that gives me lots of joy is being able to work from home during the pandemic while having the best of the best colleagues in the world with me. Right, Kiwi? <laughs> One thing that's made me really happy over the last weeks and months of this pandemic throughout this year are the wonderful people who have come off the street and given us so many wonderfully generous donations, helping us to help those who come to us for help. And we are eternally grateful. Paul Manning's Deacon at the Cathedral will read our prayer to end our reflection on joy. Shout joy. O oh, sing unto God, and sing praises unto his name. Magnify him that rideth upon the heavens. Praise him in his name, Yah. Shout it, cry it aloud upon the wind. Take the tail of his steed, and fling across the sky in his wild wake, Yah. He cannot be caught, he cannot be fled, he cannot be known, nor his knowledge escaped. The light of his name blinds the brilliance of stars, Yah. Catch the falling dragon. Ride between his flailing wings. Leap between the jaws of the lion. Grasp the horn of the unicorn. Calling with mighty voice, Yah. Caught in star flame, whipped by comet lash. Rejoice before him. Cry above the voices of the cherubim. Shout alongside the seraphim, Yah. Bellow joy behind kings. Scattered by the quaking of his hills. Fleeing before his fire, rush like snow through his thunderous flame, crying with gladness, adoration of his name. God is Lord. Yah.
We pray together. O wisdom, Lord and ruler, root of Jesse, king of David, Liz and son, king of the nations, Emmanuel, come Jesus. Hello, good evening. My name is Monica from St. Anne's and St. Bernard in Overbury Street, Edge Hill. I'm happy this evening to share a word of God with the people or with everybody from pastoral area. Our scripture leading for love from the gospel according to John. I give you a new commandment, love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also must love one another. The word of the Lord. Sister Mary Ann, FCJ at St. Hughes Center in Wavertree will reflect along with us on the scripture before we share our experiences of love in this time. Love is shown more in deeds than in words, says St. Ignatius of Loyola in his famous spiritual exercises. We all know that this is true. It is not enough to tell someone that you love them, although it is really nice to hear it every once in a while. You have also got to show them that this is true. In this very short reading that we have just heard, Jesus says to his friends, Love one another as I have loved you. How had he loved them? He had walked with them, shared meals with them, challenged their worldview, worked hard with them at organizing crowds, distributing meals. He had been their companion. We can only imagine how many more acts of kindness and support he had done for them. They're, just, they're simply not recorded. And today, he invites us to do the same, you and me, to walk with people, share life with people, help people to flourish and grow. And in this way, we grow ourselves, we receive ourselves. Jesus invites us to do loving actions. In his recent encyclical Fratelli Tutti, Pope Francis says, we can choose to cultivate kindness. I like that, to cultivate kindness so that it grows. It grows in our hearts and in our actions and it becomes a habit. And he says, those who do so, those who cultivate kindness, become stars shining in the darkness. Now there's a Christmassy image, if I ever heard one. Those who choose to cultivate kindness become stars shining in the midst of darkness. We need a few stars at the moment and both, Je both Jesus and Pope Francis are inviting us to be just that. Pope Francis gives us some concrete examples on how we can do this. He says we can do it by sharing the weight of others' problems, of others' needs, and fears, showing a concern not to offend by a word or a deed, speaking words of comfort, of strength, of consolation, of encouragement, and giving the gift of a smile and listening to people. The wonderful thing about all of these concrete examples is that these are actions that are small and I can imagine how I might be able to integrate them into my life. They are not, however, simple and often require that I get over myself and go beyond my comfort zone. But they are not impossible and these small actions accumulate, becoming habits and making each of us loving, kind people who shine like stars in the darkness. So this Advent and Christmas season, let's take Jesus' words to heart 
and start truly loving one another. With small actions, small choices, and hoping that with God's grace working in us, we will grow ever more Christ-like. Uh, love from my children and grandchildren. I love technology because it keeps us connected with our loved ones. Advent is a time to reflect upon the year that's gone. It's also a time to think about Jesus' teachings of love, of kindness and caring for one another, which in particular is uh, apt for the year that we've just had. One of the most amazing things that has come out of lockdown for me is appreciating my family so much more, whether yeah. it's seeing them on Zoom, or at a distance. I experience love by having people to talk to and not feeling alone. At our Mass for loved ones lost this year, as every family held one of these beautiful candles, deeper than the sorrow, I felt the love. During Advent, my focus on love will be that extra special effort to realise the love, the mutual love, shared all around me, and in which I can make a greater effort to share. I put this on. I put my mum and dad and my family and, and my dog. Ways in which I've been able to spread love during Advent um, is with my immediate family. We've been able, through lockdown, to be able to spend more time together. I'm usually a really busy family, so that's a difficult time. It's enabled us to also think about our friends and neighbours and other family members and to see what we can do to spread love, not just during Advent, but just throughout the whole year as well. I experience love by reflecting on my time in Lourdes and looking forward to the next time I am in Lourdes. I my mum can you take care of me. I love the colours in our cathedral, especially in these dark days. I love watching the light flicking through the thousand glass window panes, casting colours of reds, blues, yellows and greens, each reminding me of someone I love. I love the oranges and lemons of the children's chapel especially, and in the afternoon the massive glow of red spreading across the sanctuary in the Chapel of Reconciliation. Aren't we lucky? I'm Jan from St Wilfred's Parish in Garston. I'm Paul, also from St Wilfred's in Garston. Before we end our time together, we pause for a moment to remember all those who are no longer with us. Eternal rest grant unto, unto them, them, O Lord, Lord and, and let perpetual, perpetual light shine upon them. them. May, May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed, departed through the, the mercy of God, rest in, in peace. peace. 
On behalf of our pastoral associates, Helen, we thank all those who took part. The children and parents, parishioners, musicians, readers, resource gatherers, clergy, proofreaders, religious, video editors, and last but not least, pets. After the final blessing, the flames of Advent captured in the candles drawn by the children from across the pastoral area bring the coming of the light to each of our homes so that the hope, peace, joy and love of Christ is always present in our hearts. Have, Have a happy, happy Christmas, Christmas and, and God, God bless. bless. Go in peace and prepare the way of the Lord, the one who is coming.